What's going on folks and welcome to Stu's Garage. Today I'm just going to go over very quickly uh, what it takes to actually get uh, an oil gauge on your LS. So if you're doing an LS swap, um, if you're using an aftermarket harness like me, the, uh, the setup that I have doesn't have provisions for uh, an oil pressure gauge, which is very important because um, if your oil pressure drops, uh, it's important to know when that happens so you can shut your motor down and save things and figure out what's going on before you actually blow your stuff up. So, um, like I said, my setup doesn't have provisions for a um, oil pressure gauge. Um, even if you are doing a swap with using more OEM stuff, you're still not really going to know what to do with that stuff. So this is going to allow you to have an aftermarket gauge or run your oil data to whatever um, you decide to run it to. I'm going to show you two methods um, that's going to allow you to have an oil pressure gauge. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through the entire install, uh, but first of all, what you want to do is you want to get yourself a good um, oil pressure gauge. Um, after a lot of reading and research, I went with the uh, mechanical style gauge, and I got another one from Equus because I like the way their stuff looks. It's got a good reputation. Um, for vital stuff like this, you don't want to cheap out on the gauges, so you know, make sure you get yourself something decent, not necessarily an eBay gauge. I generally like eBay stuff, but certain stuff that uh, is very important like this, I just wanted to make sure that I had something. And that's part of the reason why I didn't go for an electrical gauge. Uh, because I read some mixed reviews on them. I don't necessarily uh, fully believe the reviews, the negative reviews, but I, I just don't want to take a risk at it. Um, this mechanical gauge was still $20, so it's not like I missed out there. Um, but anyways, the difference between a mechanical gauge and an electrical gauge is on an electronic gauge, um, you're just going to have the sensor unit, which may look something like this. Um, sometimes they have like a like a big canister on the back of them. I mean, even though this is a pressure gauge right here, a um, an electronic gauge actually kind of looks like this right here without the gauge on it. And then there's some wires that come out back here. But um, anyways, what you would do is you would screw that gauge or that sensor into the port and then you would run your wires. Um, with the mechanical gauge, uh, what you actually have is you've got this pressure line here, this, um, this nylon line. Um, you can also do this with copper line, but this gauge came with nylon. And that's part of why I'm gonna run this the way that I'm gonna run it, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, anyways, um, I'm actually gonna show you both setups, the electronic gauge setup and the mechanical gauge setup because I'm gonna have two sources. One's going to go to the ECU and one, this one's going to be on the dash where I can see it. What you're going to need for this install, if, if you don't have an aftermarket oil cooler or a sandwich plate like what I have, uh, you're going to need this part. And um, I don't remember what this thing is called, but you're going to see a part number flashing up on the bottom of your screen. And basically what this allows you to do is basically put any universal gauge into the oil port on your LS. Um, this is actually the factory sensor that's in the LS. Uh, there's actually a way to tap into this and wire it and get data from it if you're using an aftermarket ECU. But I destroyed this thing before I really got into researching how to do that. Um, as you can see, it's broken here on the top. And basically, I did that on purpose because I didn't have a deep one inch socket. This is a pretty large um, bolt on here. and. I just didn't have a socket that was deep enough to go around it. So I broke the edge off, uh, popped this thing out with a one inch socket, and we're going to put this one in its place. This is a 1 8 thread uh, NPT thread, and so uh, most of the oil gauges you get are going to be 1 8. So this one is going to go in the factory port, which is all the way at the back of the motor right here. Um, it, it sticks out the top of the valley pan cover. Um, I really wish I had known about this while the motor was outside of the car because it's kind of a pain to get to it. I had to actually disconnect the intake manifold so this thing is actually, uh, you know, like moving around a little bit. You can't see it, but the intake manifold is not connected. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to throw this inside there. Um, good luck if you're driving a Camaro because the cowl comes up all the way up here. But we're going to put this in here. We're going to run the nylon line inside the car and then we're going to put the gauge in, which I'm not really going to show you guys today because it's just, uh, it's more work and I'm not actually going to do it right now. Okay, the second option that you have is to actually um, go down here underneath your motor, depending 
depending on the oil pan that you have, uh, as you can see, I've got, uh, I guess you would consider this a sandwich plate, even though it's not really sandwiched in between anything. Um, but this plate actually allows me to run an oil cooler. And the only reason I put the oil cooler on here is because there's ports on here for it. And I either had to plug them or use an oil cooler. And I figured, well, shoot, the oil cooler setup is 100 bucks. Um, I might as well do a cheap upgrade versus pay like probably half of that price just for a plate to block it off and not use it. But anyways, uh, the oil cooler actually has these two ports on it, uh, here and here. And all you gotta, these are Allen keys. All you gotta do is unscrew this and you can plug your sending unit into there that's gonna read your pressure, um, your oil pressure. And you can actually do, uh, it's got two ports, so you can actually do oil temperature as well. So the reason why I'm gonna take that mechanical gauge and wire that one to the top of the motor is because uh, you can see my headers are right here. That's a nylon line. I, I don't want that thing to melt or get crimped or anything going all around the motor in crazy directions. I didn't pay for the copper line. Maybe it will work better if I use the copper line. But what I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna order a generic sending unit and I'm gonna wire that up and I'm gonna send that to the ECU. And I'll probably show you guys exactly how I do that at a later time. But for now, for uh, my gauges up front, I'm going to use that nylon line, and we're gonna go ahead and run that right now. All right, so we've already got the end of our nylon line um, connected up to this compression fitting. And this is actually going to go into here like we showed. This is gonna go in the top of the engine. So let's go ahead and throw that in there. All right, we're at the back of the motor, and you can see that the adapter is down in there. So we've got that tightened down into place. Now all we've got to do is throw a nylon line down on top of it and run that inside the cabin of the car. Alright, so as you can see we've got our nylon line connected to the oil port at the back of the motor. And all we've got to do now is run this into the cabin. Uh, it's going to be really easy for me just because I've got all these holes in here that go directly into the cabin. Like, that one right there which is probably what I'm going to end up using um, and then from there you just connect it to the back of your gauge uh, right to this port this right here is just a light to light up your gauge the gauge is mechanical so it works off of pressure so the light basically just comes on to light up the gauge and that's pretty much it for this install so uh, check back with the build catch you guys next time thanks for watching